something I need to know about is the specific electric piano sound that I think we all know. You're going to love this story, man. <laughs> You're going to love this one. A fluke of events. Leeds Rentals was the rental company that we all rented Rhodes from. Foster calls me up after a session and he says, I just played the best Rhodes I've ever heard, ever. He says, there's nothing wrong with it. The action feels great. There's no dead notes. It's just a beautiful sounding Rhodes. I said, how do I identify it? He says, it's got an E stenciled on it and it's one of Leeds Rhodes. He must have just gotten it. So, um, in this room, uh, in the big room right behind me, David was playing it, I was setting the levels and I was EQing it, and I hit the talk back man in about 30 seconds and I said, you are right. This Rhodes is unbelievable sounding. So I tell everybody about the E. I tell Greg, I tell all the cats, right? And Foster, of course, on his dates he wants it, and Greg wanted it on his dates, and. Uh, Robbie McCann and whoever else I told, Omardian, mm. uh, all the cats, um, they'd either play on it when I had a session or they would, or I told them about it. It became so hard to book. I'd have to book it two months in advance before I could book the players. <laughs> so unbelievable, right? Wow. Then I called Andy Lees and I said, okay, how did you find this thing? He says, I went to Wallach's Music City, which was this famous music store in Hollywood. And whoever was in charge of their stock wasn't very organized. Leeds went into the back stock room with one of the salesmen, and there was stuff piled to the ceiling, man. Tons of stuff. And the bottom of this one giant pile is this box, big box. Leeds says, what's that? And the guy says, I don't know. They take all the other stuff off, and they open it up, and it's a 73 Mark I Fender Rhodes. And Leeds buys it. And just happened to be, that was the next day that it showed up on that date, Foster called me and told me about, right? Right. So that's how it was found. It had sat in the box for nine years, brand new. <laughs> what? That's how unorganized that store was with its stock. Then the Yamaha DX7 comes along three or four years later, and then that became the sound, right? Then the E started gathering dust. Right. A cat named George Mamalakis that lives in Santa Barbara, who is a very good piano player, he loved this thing. And he's a go-getter guy. If he wants something, he's going to get it. So he went down to Leeds. He drove, drove down to Santa Barbara and went to Leeds and said, I want to play that thing, man. Is it cool? And he said, yeah. Went back home and said, I got to buy this. So he called up Leeds and went down again. He says, what do you want for it? You know, he says, nobody's renting them anymore. All the roads are gathering dust. And he says, give me three grand. So George bought it. I met George 20-something years ago because I wondered what happened to the damn thing. I didn't need it at the time because the DX7s were still going. But I said, you know, George, someday we're going to sample this. When memory wasn't an issue anymore, I said, George, we got to do this. That was five years ago. So... I said, the first thing we have to do is rebuild the electronics because what a lot of people don't understand about vintage stuff is vintage gear is tired. Capacitors have a life of 15 years maximum unless they're really high-end caps. So I said, and here's how we're going to do it. And this is where my electronic technical thing comes in. I said, draw out the schematic on a giant piece of cardboard. Every part you take out, I'm going to tell you the parts to take out, start with all the caps, and put it on the schematic, tape it with some scotch tape. So if we don't like the new capacitor we put in, we can put back the old one, if it just happens to be something that makes a big difference in the sound. And when George would check it, and no, it was just getting better and better all the time. It just came, came to life, like any vintage amp would. Then we needed a partner. And my buddy Chris Paler, who lives in San Francisco, outstanding bass player and arranger, outstanding, and a great guy. I said, you know, we got to find a home to partner with the E. He says, I've got the guy for you. He owns Orange Tree Samples. He's a brilliant piano player, and he's another guy with perfect pitch. And not only that, I quickly discovered he's a genius at code writing. We immediately liked him, and that's who we hooked up with. Now, Greg's a one-man operation, pretty much. 
So he had other, you know, things going. It took, like, like I say, the whole thing took four and a half years. I said, George, we have to build something that strikes the keys. But the only way to do this right is to have it clamped on the E so it can't move. George is good with mechanical stuff. He built a device that has a weighting action that you can change. So we got to make sure it can be in small increments, like a quarter of a dB. He says, no problem. The first thing he built worked perfectly. Mm. So we did about 30 samples per note, okay? Wow. At 96K. It was 9 gig, and, and Native Instruments, they have a way to render down that supposedly doesn't affect, I mean, they cut it down to 3 gig, from 9 gig to 3 gig, I said, this is impossible. It can't be a replica. Well, Greg checked it. He checked the 9 gig version versus the 3 gig version with playing a MIDI part and then flipped the phase on the playback of one of the two stereo tracks and it canceled out perfectly. So their lossless format works. Bottom line is this. Harold Rhodes heard about the E. I had made this thing famous. I'm not tooting my own horn here. I was the guy that told everybody and it became in such demand. Well, Harold wanted to hear it. So he drove to George's house in Santa Barbara. He listened to George play it. I think he played it himself. And he says, this is the most beautiful sounding Fender Rhodes I've ever heard. They made over 250,000 of these. And yeah. I'm sure he had played thousands of them, right? That's a big compliment. And he says, you're right, man. The word on the street of this being the best of the best, I've never heard one better. That's, I think, probably about the best endorsement you can get from Harold Rhodes himself. This, this one stood out, man. You know, the run next to it, who knows if the run next to it, who knows if a guy was grabbing pickups from another box? Who yeah. knows if they were grabbing tines from another box? The sonics of any instrument are only as good as its weakest link. There aren't any weak links. Yeah. I don't think anybody has a stereo mode. I mean, there's literally a true stereo mode where the notes pan, just like a piano. And man, when you're playing comping and the notes are moving around in the stereo spectrum, it gives life, man. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. If you buy the E through Orange Tree Samples or through my website, www.jgraden.com. You'll also find out when my YouTube channel's up through that site or my um, um, Facebook page that my PA runs. I don't run it, but I get, you know, I, I answer guys here and there, but there's only so much time, man. I wish I could answer everybody, but you know how that goes.